Heritage Cultural Center in Strasbourg, where there are 14 people on hunger strike. And we're talking here with Cardo. Um, I'm Sarah Glynn from Scottish Solidarity with Kurdistan, and I first met Cardo when I went to Rajava in Me, and then I met him again in Brussels, and then I was um, not sideways, I think, to hear that he was one of the hunger strikers and had to come out and see him and see what makes someone take such extreme measures. So, um, but first today, um, we heard Leila Govan, who was the first person to go on hunger strike in this round of hunger strike, and is now on her 79th day of, of hunger strike in Turkish prison, was actually released from prison today. Um, she's hunger, the hunger strikes are all about um, giving stopping the isolation of Abdullah Arshalan, which we'll talk a little bit about later, but I just want to ask Kado um, what it means, the fact that Leila is released today. Well, uh, the release of Leila uh, means the second success that our action has achieved. The first success was uh, in uh, January uh, 12th, when uh, the Turkish government was forced to uh, allow Mamadou Jalan to visit Ojalan in uh, Himbali Islands. And that, that's Ojalan's brother. Yes, yeah, Ojalan's brother. That was the first success that our action achieved. And the second success is now today we see that Alila Govan is uh, free uh, from prison. Uh, but uh, we want to stress that uh, that was not the objective of neither Leila Govan nor our hunger strikers in Brussels, in Strasbourg, and the rest of the world. And for that reason, uh, Leila Govan now she is in hospital, but uh, uh, she said that she is determined to continue on the hunger strike until our objective, our demand is met, which is the end of isolation. Uh, isolation means uh, something and putting a political prisoner in public health is something different. Uh, when, uh, uh, since 2011, a pattern has emerged in uh, Turkish approach towards Rojala. They put him in Kaminika uh, for a few years and after which uh, uh, a hunger strike is launched by our people in the movement and the Kurdish people. And uh, when the hunger strike reaches uh, critical level stages, uh, you know, they end the incommunicado status, which means they uh, allow one visit of 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And uh, for the next few years, they once again, they put him um, in Kaminikado for uh, another few years until a new hunger strike is launched by the Kurds. But uh, we want this isolation end, which means, uh, firstly, the Turkish constitution should be implemented in vis a vis Ojalan case. According to the Turkish constitution, his political prisoner has the right to be visited once, once a week uh, for the duration of uh, half an hour or one hour. So. Uh, our demand is something which is in line with the Turkish constitution, not to speak about the, uh, the uh, European conventions on human rights, not to speak about the uh, United Nations declarations on human rights, not to speak about what's called the Mandela, Mandela Road, which is the uh, minimum standard of uh, treatment of individual prisoners. So we demand this. Until, uh, our demand is not until the isolation on Ozalan is not lifted. We are determined to uh, continue on uh, our strikes, no matter what comes. So can I ask you, Cardo, how long you've been on hunger strike this time here in Strasbourg? Uh, today is day 14. And you've, you've lost quite a lot of weight, it's visible on you. And how do you feel otherwise? Well, uh, among us, uh, 
the uh, minimum uh, weight loss is 8 kg, which is me, and the maximum is 12, uh, which is uh, yourself, uh, and is uh, uh, quite elderly, uh, 54 years of age. Uh, and its uh, hunger strike is uh, not an annual year. So uh, you need uh, to be really determined. And uh, yes, it's uh, kind of a lot of pressure on your, uh, on your body. But at the same time, what matters is the willpower and determination. Uh, uh, because and now we, we are in day 40, yeah, a lot of physical problems have already started to emerge, you know, including sleep disorder including uh, poor concentration myself I'm suffering from that uh, uh, oversensitivity to light and to uh, sound uh, headache uh, stomach ache. these are just uh, some of the problems that I've started to uh, but uh, what matters is all about willpower and motivation and the novel cause that we are fighting for uh, as long as you have these, uh, I think the rest, uh, uh, they would trouble you, but they would not be uh, an obstacle towards you. And as we see now in the case of Leila Govan, for example, we uh, spoke about it, yeah, now she is in day 79. And she could die at any moment, but uh, because she is determined, she, uh, she has the real power to, uh, to fight for this noble cause. Uh, the rest, I think, would be uh, endurable and intolerable. The rest would be endurable I and mean, physical problems. What pushed you to take what such a, a last resort measure? What pushed you to this extreme? Uh, in the last uh, uh, eight years, since 2011, uh, we've tried all uh, avenues all uh, ways. We've knocked all doors and uh, uh, we done a lot of uh, demonstrations, long marches uh, from uh, Brussels to Strasbourg, from Germany to Strasbourg, from uh, Luxembourg to Strasbourg. Uh, we've been engaged in a lot of uh, uh, diplomatic relations with different institutions, different personalities uh, inside the European uh, institutions, but none of them produced any uh, any concrete result, other than the hunger strikes that I explained earlier. Uh, we uh, the first hunger strikes that we launched in Basel was in 2012. Uh, the first one was in 2007, which lasted for uh, uh, 38 days, and after the 38 days, you know, they lifted the uh, isolation in Manchester. And the next one was in 2012, uh, which ended 52 days. And after that 52 days, they all, what all they did was to allow a visit to Ocala. And then uh, the next one was in 2016. In 2016 days, the communities in Europe, they went on an indefinite hunger strike, which lasted for 28 days, after which they once again, they just allowed a visit of 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Between that, you do have the, the peace process with Ocalan, so yes. there has to be more communication. The peace uh, process uh, lasted from 2013 to 2015. During that period, uh, uh, because Ocalan was uh, representing the Kurdish side and he just uh, 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 was communicating, was uh, engaged in the peace process with the Turkish sides, he was allowed to uh, visit the delegations uh, for a few times. Uh, and then, once again, he was just uh, uh, put in communicado uh, until uh, 2016. That was basically when they reneged yes. on the agreement, yeah. yes. when the Turkey so, reneged on the agreement. Yeah. Looking at the, uh, at the last eight years or even ten years, this is only the hunger strikes that we launch and uh, it ends in uh, something like, for example, uh, this time we, we did not know if Ocalan uh, was alive or not until Mehmet Ocalan uh, went to Gimbali and visited him. Uh, but this time we decided that uh, a visit of ten minutes is, is just, uh, it's okay, it, uh, it shows that our action can achieve something, but it's not enough. The isolation has been, has to be lifted. And Ozalan, like all the political prisoners, should be allowed to 
burada So can you explain to people who don't really know much about Arshalan why he's so important that people will put their lives on the line for him? Well, Arshalan is important not only for the uh, people of Kurdistan, but uh, for a wider community, for the international community, I think, for uh, a few reasons. The, the first <laughs> and the most important thing, uh, Arshalan is a political figure that is revered by uh, millions of the Kurds internationally as the right leader. Uh, a leader who dedicated his entire life for the freedom uh, from modern uh, and a brutal colonialism practiced by Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Syria. Uh, in a signature campaign that ended in 2015, uh, more than 10 million people, uh, mostly Kurds, uh, they said that we recognize him as our political leader and we want, we demand his freedom. It's very important. And secondly, Ojalan is a political theorist that has contributed to uh, modern philosophy on a wide range of issues. We uh, uh, should point out that it was his political philosophy that gave shape to what we see now in Rojava, a multicultural, uh, feminist, and ecologic society, uh, including all ethnic and religious diversities been to Russia, we can probably comment on that much better than myself. And uh, thirdly, Ozalan has been the most vocal uh, uh, voice in the whole Turkey demanding for peace. Uh, since 1993, uh, uh, he declared eight unilateral ceasefires, and uh, each time he declared the movement just followed, and in two occasions, in 1999 and uh, 2013, he ordered the withdrawal of a, a guerrilla fighters, even though some people did not like uh, this, that he ordered that and the movement followed and uh, uh, because he wanted to secure the past to peace. Uh, so silence as a land means uh, silencing the most uh, vocal politicians for peace in Turkey. And this is the reason that uh, Turkey uh, wants to keep Ocalan silent because they don't want peace, they don't want, they want war. But, uh, War, a military solution, has proved futile. It doesn't work. If they uh, were able to defeat the PKK, the Kurdish movement, military, they should have done that back in 1980s, not now. By now, still they have not realized that they cannot uh, solve it military. In fact, the more they uh, approach it militarily, the more powerful the Kurdish movement becomes. Now we see that it has reached all the uh, uh, all aside all corners of the world. You know, different people coming uh, to uh, to join the, to work with the Kurdish movement. For that reasons, Ozalan should not be uh, silenced. For these three reasons, and uh, uh, personally, because he dedicated his entire life for our people. I am here. I feel a great uh, awe to him, and I want to pay that personally. And I hope that my action can do something to pay the huge awe that we, uh, a huge debt that we owe to Ojal. We're sitting here in Strasbourg, the home of the European Parliament, and obviously your action here is directed at the European institution. So can you tell us first what you hope that your pressure on them can achieve, what they should be doing that they're not doing? Uh, well, uh, Turkey is a member of the Council of Europe and the uh, Committee for the Prevention of Torture uh, is uh, uh, working under the supervisions of the uh, Council of Europe. Uh, we wish that we did not have to launch this hunger strike. We wish that they would carry their duty towards Ozalan. We wish that they they would have acted against the perpetual torture that the Turkish government is inflicting on Ozalan. They did not do their, uh, uh, their uh, duty. They did not fulfill it. And it forced us 
to launch this hunger stack. Now uh, we ask them that they should do their duty to us. They should prevent, uh, they should do whatever they can to prevent the torsion that is uh, inflicted on Ojala. They should also work towards uh, the Council of Europe because it's, uh, Turkey is a member of uh, the Council of Europe put pressure on Turkey to uh, implement uh, uh, at least uh, what the Turkish constitutions stipulates to Jerusalem, just leave the isolation and allow him a regular visit by his family members and brothers. But meanwhile, actually, the European Union gives money to Turkey. They work with Turkey to try and keep refugees out of Europe. So they're actually working quite closely with Turkey. Yes, uh, the European institutions, I think we can uh, differentiate between the legal institutions and the political institutions. The legal institutions, they side with the truth, they side with the Kurdish movement. We saw very lastly that they a European uh, Court of Justice, they said that, that PKK is not a terrorist organization. In 2017, we saw that the uh, Belgian Court said the PKK is not a terrorist organization. But we, uh, uh, we see that the European political institutions, because they've got uh, economic links with Turkey, they continue to be political. Uh, uh, but what we do, what we ask them, uh, to uh, to follow the rule of uh, law in in their own country. To uh, yes, they that's true that they have uh, economic relations with Turkey, but they should not uh, ignore the fact that Turkey is. Uh, committing war crimes in Kurdistan, including in Afrin. Turkey is violating its own constitutions. Turkey is uh, uh, turned Turkey into the, 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 uh, the biggest prison in the world for the journalists, for independent thinkers, for MPs, MEP, for M uh, deputies for civil society uh, 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 members. They should not uh, ignore these facts, and they should put pressure on Turkey to respect uh, the rule of law, uh, to, they should help uh, Turkey to become a democratic country. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, that's what we demand. But our demand in this hunger strike is not uh, uh, too much because uh, uh, that would uh, probably uh, be regarded as uh, impractical, too much, uh, excessive. Our demand is simple to leave the, uh, the isolation imposed on Bajala. And people will be listening to this sitting in Scotland, so what can they do? What should they be asking their elected members to do, or what can they do themselves to help support your cause? Well, uh, people can, uh, in fact, do a lot. Uh, uh, ordinary people, uh, people inside institutions, uh, journalists, M MPs, MEPs, uh, they can do a lot. For example, uh, people can join uh, demonstrations. They can show their solidarity uh, with what we've been doing. Uh, people, uh, they can write to the representatives inside the parliament. Uh, people inside uh, different institutions, they can raise the issue, uh, they can uh, uh, join the signatures campaign that we have launched online. Uh, they can Sorry, write what's to the, the signature campaign that you've launched online? Can you explain? Uh, the signature campaign we uh, launched online, it, uh, uh, it says that uh, the demand of the hunger strikers is our demand. And uh, a lot of people joined that and they uh, put the signature to it. Uh, people, uh, MPs, uh, 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 British MPs, Scottish MPs, they can raise the issue inside the parliament. They can write to... Uh, the Minister of Justice to put pressure on Turkey uh, to end the isolations of Ojalan. Uh, people uh, who, uh, for example, now I was talking with a American uh, a filmmaker. Uh, she was uh, going to uh, to do something, you know, uh, in terms of uh, her work to raise the issue. You know, whatever they can do, they can do a lot to raise the issue, to show the solidarity. For example, people like yourself uh, have come from Scotland all the way down to here to Strasbourg just to show your solidarity with us. It really means a lot. We had uh, Kurdish peoples coming down from Sweden, from Norway, from Denmark, but we would say they are Kurds, we are fighting for the same cause. But people like yourself, you know, uh, 
uh, from Scotland, it means a lot. We don't expect that from everybody, but we expect from Scottish people to show their solidarity, to stand beside us and to do whatever they can to, uh, to help uh, uh, meet our demand, which is basic, which is humane, and which is in line with the values that you share in Scotland. And as you say, it's an international cause that what Arshalan is fighting for is for a better world for everybody. Yeah, definitely, yeah. The model Ojalan is the architect of the Rojava revolution. As you saw in uh, in Rojava, Rojava can be a model for not the uh, Middle East, but even beyond. You know, this is where uh, uh, diversity is not seen as a as a source for consent, but as a source for empowerment for uh, you know different uh, religious and. Uh, uh, ethnic minorities are participating. You see that women are, uh, uh, you know, enjoying an equal status uh, uh, with the female. You see that in Rojava, uh, we see a system of co-presidency. So women share the uh, the, the leadership in each and every uh, single institution. Why cannot be a mother for the world? And for that reason, this is uh, the duty of all the progressive, especially progressive and democratic forces uh, uh, in the world, not to see that only as a Kurdish issue. This is a human issue. Uh, this is the issue of democracy. This is uh, the issue of the rule of law that should be respected uh, internationally. And for that reason, because Ozalan is advocating this system, is uh, at the head of this movement, which is working in that direction, they should uh, support. Ojalan and the Kurdish movement. I'm sitting with Dilek Ojalan, who is niece of Abdullah Ojalan and is one of the three women who are on hunger strike here. And Dilek is also an MP. So, Dilek, obviously you were brought up with the politics, um, but when did you get involved yourself? يعني مش طبيعي كيت السياسة وأنا بهبد ده مزنو لبس كان كتام لبس بكر سياسة كان سياسة يعني دم تبتي أفهم ما سمع sorry we should do it in Turkish then we started in Kurdish but I'm so, um, in fact, you know, when I was in, of course, going to school, uh, I was interested and I was involved, but um, more deeper involvement began when I was in at university. I began to get involved with the, you know, the greater freedom movement. And you've been an MP with the HDP. So perhaps you could tell people in Scotland what the HDP stands for, what what the party is. HDP zaten milletvekilliğimiz, onunla siyasetle yürüttüğümüz. Belki Skoçya'daki insanlara HDP'nin ne için mücadele ettiğini de açıklayabilirsiniz. Yani beri HDP izle de BP siyaset destekli meşan ve derece de BP şuan Armancı'yı rekıstığındayım o perverde bu. So before uh, actually the HDP, which is the um, People's Democracy Party, I was actually involved with, with the Democratic Regions Party, which is more involved with the municipalities uh, and etc. So I was um, mostly doing education and organizing within the Democratic Regions Party. HDP actually began as a proposal by um, Abdullah Hojalan, 
um, our leader, and um, it developed in, in the form and in action to unite different peoples uh, within Turkey. Mm -hmm. It was a project and a party, political party, that intended to unite not only different uh, peoples, like Turkmens, like Assyrians, Armenians, Arabs, so it wasn't just Kurds, it was also other different uh, peoples, um, especially those repressed, as well as um, repressed um, religious groups, like the Yezidis, the Christians, and etc. So its aim and target was to unite these and to, um, to struggle for freedom together. So in 2015, for the very first time, HDP, the People's Democracy Party, entered the parliament with 80 uh, members. And after these elections, as you know, uh, things began to radically change in Turkey to the worst. Um, so all of the emergency laws and emergency situation or, or the, um, the coup attempt and etc., uh, and also, of course, the the massacre against uh, in the against the Kurds all began after that period. Mm -hmm. So the the AKP, AKP government did not uh, accept the uh, elections uh, at the time, so it it wanted to repeat the elections. So, uh, as a result of that, because they, they had the mechanisms in their hands, the elections were repeated, but this time we had more, again, you know, more than 70 MPs entering the parliament. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do a full term because of, of this. It was like two and a half years because of these elections. Uh, so therefore, um, yeah, and then, you know, the election, as a result of those elections, different people went into the parliament. So um, then we could no longer stay, I could no longer stay in Turkey along with some other colleagues of mine and um, in fact the path for, for me to continue to do politics was completely obstructed and um, I had to, because we had um, sentences delivered uh, against us so uh, I had to leave the country, and now so I'm here. So do you have a, a sentence against you personally? Sana karşı herhangi bir mahkeme kararı var mı? Böyle, Dusan Niv yek dosyemin ceza git, o şansda evde dosyemin cimin hene. On one of the files, I received two and a half years of imprisonment, imprisonment, but there are 16 others pending court cases. And what do they, will they go ahead even in your absence? Um, sen orada yokken bu davalar devam edecek mi? Nahar hin link eklenek ürünün de dızanın kezde dervamış ver ve nahin ekli usta seknanda durur. Of course they are aware that um, I'm, I'm not in the country. So um, uh, therefore, you know, but, but I believe that one by one they will put that into motion as well. So we're just waiting to see how they are reacting with everything. And it's amazing that you all go on, but how many HDP MPs have been through the, the prison system? Yani diyor tabii muazzam bir şey hepinizin hala devam ediyor olması. Ama HDP milletvekillerinden kaçı 
e, bu ceza sistemi ya da cezaevinde. Naha nezi ne ezbalerim ve heve ve hepsi rukatim ve hepsi heve. Hemi ceza götün, deme parlamenteri ve berdavan bitir yani ceza götünü bermek yoktur. Mm -hmm. I believe it's nine or ten people now who are in prison, who are imprisoned, who were former uh, members of parliament. And there's also been mayors as well, hasn't there, and other people mm -hmm. arrested here. Yeah? Ama diyor tabii ki belediye başkanları ve diğerleri de var. Yani pırhene yani gelekin yani kaybeti yani ve parlamento çıkan hem her soru Of course we were talking about the members of parliament which is the People's Democracy Party but then there is the Democratic Regions Party so therefore I, I, I believe all of the uh, co-mayors of the municipalities are in are imprisoned at the moment. And of course we heard this morning that Leila Govan had been released and I wondered, you know, what was your immediate feeling and, and what impact will that have? Sabah duyduk ki Leyla Güven serbest bırakılmış. Sizde nasıl bir etkisi oldu sizin üzerinizde ve bu sürece nasıl etkileyecek süreci? Yani peki hem tek başına hem encamdır hem Musa denerim çünkü dama bu çalaki hem Avrupa hem Kurdistan'ı zede bu devlet mecbur mu Leyla Güven tahliye ettirir? So we see this as as a as a success of our action, uh, especially those in in Kurdistan, as well as uh, the actions that have been taken in Europe. So we see this as an output of that. Um, but of course, it's not over yet. Tecdid Rabe, Leyla Güven Berda, Evcihindeki tesiri hakkıdır. Le Heri Tayyip, Hezi Gel Gelebilirleri bir yer bu. Of course, uh, it was important that the Council of Europe had also uh, discussed the issue and called on Turkey to free Leyla Güven and end the isolation. So we, we believe that this has a role as well, but of course we think that the greater role uh, is due to the the Kurdish people and their friends all over the world, um, you know, being in action and demanding uh, this. Yani ev Leyla Güven Berdan evi ki fasiye ki rasti çünkü Revşevi kendisi ne başlarla gördük ki hiç takarda bu. So we are immensely happy, of course, that Leyla Güven is now free and out of the prison. Uh, not only, but especially because she was on a hunger strike and her health has, has reached a critical phase and prison, of course, uh, makes that situation much worse. So her freedom is actually, um, in that sense, not an achievement because she shouldn't have been in there in the first place, you know. And um, so her, her actual demand still stands there. So what they try to do with this is to uh, break all the mobilization and the activities and protests that are going on at the moment. Um, and therefore, you know, her, her demand and her aim has not actually been realized. So, in fact, she made a statement after she was released that, you know, her, her target has not been reached, so she will be continuing the hunger strike um, outside, and we have also um, decided amongst us that this is in no way what we've been Defect demanding you. exactly and we will be going on with the hunger strike as well i wonder as well if you've got any special message to send to the women in women who might support you is there any way that we can 
really support you as women because obviously our Shalan has done so much for women. So do you have any special message for women in Scotland? Öcalan kadınlar için çok şeyler e, yaptı ama sizin kadınlara bir çağrınız var mı? Skoçya'daki kadınlara, onlar mesela siz de kadınsınız, onlar bir kadın olarak, kadınlar olarak sizin için neler yapabilirler? Ben de neyle güvenim çok azal ben de çalakiye fakir got sayıya serokati ile bedelime eşit ufasın ve azaliye bir azaliye fakir ile bedelime en bir şey müsaade fikrim bu tedgiricinin kul serokati kedeki mezinde bu hijide de armancama evvel kul en Azadi Hukuk'un Serukati Hukuk'un Hevra girebildim. When Leyla, when Leyla Güven, when she made a statement from prison, she said that um, the reason why she is at a at a level that she is in terms of political capacity and etc. is due to the effort and also labor, both physical and intellectual, of, of Abdullah Hojalan. And so I want to say that I totally agree with that uh, and that he's put a lot of effort for all of us into this. And therefore we see actually the approach to then Hojalan is an approach to ourselves because of this effort and labor for freedom for us, you know, for everybody, but also for also women as well. And therefore we, we connect and we say that his freedom is our freedom. <laughs> Um, recently and currently, and in fact, very key and important activities and protests have been waged with under the you know the leadership of women. And women's you know like Kurdish revolution and freedom struggle has been developing um, with women at the forefront. So all of this is in fact, you know, following the following the lead of the philosophy of freedom that Öcalan is putting forth. And we, we are just saying that um, we can only break this fascism not only in our homeland but all around the world which is reaching its peak by you know um, making sure that women is at the forefront breaking uh, all of that. And can I, sort of on a more personal note, um, was has Arshalan been you know special to his nieces? You know, did he help you when you were little? Obviously, you can't have seen him much in the last twenty years. But when you were small, did he have any sort of special relationship with the women in the family? Bir de diyor hani öz, öz, gün, özel bir zeminde de bir soru sormak istiyorum. Sen sonuçta diyor hani onun yenisi. E, 20 yıldır tabii çok görüşmüş olamazsınız hani. E, ama mesela Öcalan'ın ailedeki kadınların gelişimine, ailedeki kadınlara yaklaşımı nasıl? This is a unique question, of course, and I let me tell you that I was raised in in our village, in the village. My family is not so, um, you know, uh, well off in terms of um, financially or, or even socially. Uh, I can say that after my mother used to go and see her brother in prison, she began to transform and change. She became more of a free woman. As you, um, I too, after finishing college, I had no intention of actually going on to university 
or doing anything else. Çünkü cevap elya besturnade. Çünkü jinli karın bakınen jinli kara dertlere derva. Because the society that I was in did not allow for this, did not allow me to go to university or do anything else outside of that society. My whole life changed completely after um, uh, Erdogan pro made proposals in relation to me. He told me uh, especially uh, that I should go to university and that I should work. And of course he has a very, you know, he's quite influential on the family. And Çünkü yani Bişti Jupa zaten daha cihan ceseri katın aslında. Yani Grant gibi Natalie Ser Malbat hem gelen o şulatan abin daha. So not just that he has influence all over the world, but he has influence over the family as well. And so this is how my whole life transformed as well. Thank you very much.